Hey everybody, how's it going? Laguna here with uh, Dean, the previous second member of Laguna Munta, part of the original duo. Yep. Say hey Dean. Hey guys. And today is the third anniversary of Laguna Munta, of our first show we ever played. Yes, round of applause please. And it was at our, the Ale House here in town, locally. And uh, this is it's a lot different than what Laguna Munta is now just in like basic setup and everything yeah, it's definitely evolved a lot <clears throat> yeah because now I have all the drums pre-recorded I have all bass tracks yeah and the, have the, the rolls and fills are all set up whereas when we played this gig we had the keyboard and we just used the built-in drum loops and I think it, do we even do fills um, if we could afford to like take yeah. a break from the guitar and then jump in and press yeah. it real quick, like the end, it was usually like, oh, it's ending time. He'd give me like the nod or something like that, and I'd be like, okay, got a quick it. moment to hit it. it. To... Yeah, then it goes, <laughs> and that was the only. And then you still have to hit stop. And this, but this is actually like pretty uh, reminiscent of just like us playing ages and ages ago, back when we had my my old amp, the, yeah. the G Deck amp. Yes. by Fender that had its own drum loops on it. We'd, we'd mess around with that all the time. The original Laguna drummer. But, yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> we could call him Even actually. before Laguna Munta. That was like Entity Reborn era. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. That's Which, so long ago. I don't know yeah. if I've discussed, but maybe in another video we could talk about that. But, yeah, after that it was actually just getting the keyboard, which is actually right here off camera, and... Yeah, it's uh, it really it really improved. It filled up a lot of space that would have not been there otherwise. We played a lot of shows, I think, without drums before you got this. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Me and Dean used to play <clears throat> at a local pool hall, where uh, the people owning it were pretty chill, and they would just <coughs> let us play for tips. And I would play. Uh, some, if Dean wasn't available, I'd play alone. Or if he was available, we'd play together. And we'd do stuff like we do some white stripes. Yeah, that's right. That was back when we were really dead, into it. Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground. Yes, yes. And uh, we did Eastbound and Down. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, that's right. Uh, on the Road Again, Willie Nelson. And we did Kiss, God of Thunder, and Rock and Roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. That this was is a cover man. we did. Good memory. Yeah, I remember the songs, yeah, but yeah. You, could, you couldn't ask me, like, what we did. A moment, yeah. How was it? I don't remember. We played those songs. I just remember a lot of people, like, always like, hey, could you play this song? Could and you play this song? It's like, all right, know. here's, like, two seconds of this <laughs> yeah. song. Yeah, I am. This sounds kind of like it. <laughs> if, we were, if we were to market our services, it'd be, we know 30 seconds of your favorite songs. songs. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Could be right. the beginning, middle, of the end. Could be the solo <laughs> part. But we know, guaranteed, we probably know at least 30 seconds of all of your favorite songs. Like, yeah, something like, like this, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and they, yeah. <laughs> like, and that was gonna be good enough for yeah, him. We're just cool. like, you happy with that, right? Nice. That's all you want. Get back to our music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, uh, there was a funny incident there, or not incident, but instance where uh, some lady tipped me, went for playing Eastbound and Down just because she liked it so much better than Jerry Reed's version. Really? Yeah, which I, I mean, I love Jerry Reed, so I, I at the time I took it as a compliment, but at the, now I'm thinking like, wow, she kind of. Gave one to Jerry Reed. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Reed did call us later and, and ask yeah. for an apology from this lady, but we couldn't yeah, find her. Yeah, so the lawyers. Yeah, um, but yeah, the um, what was it? Uh, oh man, there was something I wanted to talk about. And I can't remember. Yeah, uh, was it at the Dante's pool hall? No. Oh yeah. So basically, it was like it was the first real time that we got any level of exposure and we're playing outside by ourselves. Yeah. That yeah. Was, kind that was of pretty nerve wracking, and so. I, you know, we had been rehearsing for a long time, probably a year. Like, we really, yeah, we were really milking the rehearsal. We were kind of timid on pulling the trigger <laughs> to play live. But I've always been that way. It, and it, it caused problems in my band, uh, Sectarian Violence, with me and the guitar player, because I wanted it to, we, we had gotten a new drummer, and I really wanted this to be perfect when we went out for the first time, and I was just kind of getting it about not getting us a gig, because I was the leader, and... But it was all about really wanting it to just be as tight as possible. And I think that was the th same thing here. But luckily, my girlfriend um, works at, at the Taos Ale House, which is where we got our first gig. She actually got us the gig and kind of 
kind of kicked us into gear because she talked to the manager and set it up and then it was like all of a sudden oh we got a gig yeah i remember it was kind of like okay we got like a month I yeah think and it we, had, like we had to play two hours it was like yeah i was like oh man that's so a long set. we had to pull our shit together fast and uh, it was our first paying gig yeah it was like totally. they were actually paying us like it was food and cash yeah which was really cool up until this point it was all just tips or sometimes not even a thank you we just, we just did fun sometimes really. not even a thank you <laughs> and it, it was fun too. Yeah, just playing there was just really fun. Yeah, and I'm always I'm always nerve wracked before a show, and I remember, I remember actually this night sitting down with you, <coughs> and I said to you, I'm like, yeah, I'm always like nervous before yeah, a show. You, you say that all the time. And team's just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just cool as a cucumber. So yeah, that hasn't changed. I'm always anxious before a show, but like. Honestly, after I get the first song in and it's not a train wreck and I'm like, okay, I, I'm singing it okay and I'm playing okay. And then the momentum kind of kicks you along. And then I feel good. I feel good after that. Might, maybe not completely confident, but way less anxious than initially. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it, it, when I kind of go up there, I'm, you know, maybe like a little bit nervous, but like a big thing about it is I don't feel like I have to really try too hard to do anything because it's like songs I played forever, mm -hmm. and, you know, songs I'm super familiar with and you play them all the time and I'm always listening to them. And so when I get up there, I feel more pressure to kind of like engage the audience. And that was like a big thing about yeah, what I thought. Yeah, you're good about that. You're good at that too. I was like, let's talk to them. Yeah. Let's like, I'll point at somebody out and just be like, just try not to just do this classic thing where you're just like standing there with a the guitar and you're just like, eh, it's yeah. like this, uh, and then here, try oh, here's to, the change. Try to be a <laughs> You know, it's, okay, yeah. cool. And then, yeah, and then, you know, the song's over and you kind of turn away. It's like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> like yourself <laughs> yeah but yeah so that's how it, that's how it felt for me if there was pressure it kind of came to that and it's interesting it's very but very fun though yeah and and like you said about um it's don't think you know you don't got to think about it that much mm -hmm. it's when i start thinking about it a lot is when i really yeah. fuck it up that's like classic i'm trying just... to, i'm like trying so hard to sing it this way and, I'm, and i and i even said to myself during the last show in my head i'm like dude just fucking sing it quit thinking about it so much. and it sounded <laughs> so much better it's nerves man yeah. it's like once you it's really like once that seed of doubt's there it just kind of flourishes especially if the more yeah. you focus on it the more time it has seed to grow seed of doubt grows like a fucking weed it's like whoa oh yeah. it's like oh you have like you have an issues right oh you think that that's going to be a like a, a problem in the song oh great oh, now you're be. focusing on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind of how it works so this was uh yeah so <laughs> dean was less nerve-wracked about playing this show than i was but um, I'm sure there was still a little bit of nerves. Like I said, yeah, yeah, like I said, it's like, it's a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it was the first time, it's first like, time out live. It's like being in front of people, and whenever you, like, screw, you, you, you mess up something, like, how it through, it's like, shh. Yeah, you know. probably not going to notice, but dang. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. people are like, oh, that was a good show, and I'm like, yeah, I fucked up, like, five times, and it's they're like, like, yeah, well, I didn't notice, I'm like, well, thank you, but. It's like, you don't know the song like I do. It does, <laughs> I, you know, it's like, it, it's sad. It's sad because people can enjoy it and tell me it was a good show, but I'm, but I, I won't necessarily go home happy unless I feel like I did good. No matter what people say. Hmm. That's interesting. You know? Yeah. No, I get that. Which is, that, that sucks because sometimes people are really cool and like really. Like, oh, it's really great. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I, I appreciate that and I feel that vibe in the moment, but, but still in the back of my head, it's kind of like, yeah, but remember you fucked up that little thing. <laughs> And you should be better than that. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're going to check out a video of us playing at the Ale House three years ago today for our first live gig. This one is running. Yeah. And this is before we kind of had a cameraman or anything like that. We have the audio recorder set up and the camera set up at kind of just above hip level from Dean's side so you can see kind of across Dean and me. It's not the best camera angle, but I'm glad that we have it. And we n neither of us have actually watched this video yet, right? Like maybe once a long time ago, maybe years ago, but I mean, we recently. probably watched it yeah, after we the, the day. Yeah, we this guy's always like we record something and then it's like, "Oh yeah, we're going to watch it again for like the next week." You yeah. Know? It's like, "Check it out. I'll throw that on." And then like he'll have 10 other people come by. And it's like, oh, yeah, have you seen this yet? And then we're watching it again. Yeah. It's like, I like this part. It's, it's like, and I'm like, yeah. It's true. This part. I'm very proud of my work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something I can share with people. I, yeah, I do do that. I yeah, it's, like, it's very classic. I, and if, and if, it's so jazzed if, about it. It's like, hanging, oh, let's check it out. If you're hanging out a lot, you get like three run-throughs. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, um. 
Great, Chris, here we go. Yeah, here, but like, you know, usually it's like, yeah, I like, I like it, you know, this is my favorite part. Here comes the part that Chris likes. Yeah. Oh man, I like this part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I won't be doing any of that today because this has been three years since we've watched it. Uh, so, yeah, this is us playing running at uh, the Taos Ale House. So let's check it out. If it wants to. If you best play. Here we go. See my grandma over there. <laughs> Support local. I love that shirt. I love that shirt. Is that the shirt you, you're wearing? The support local music. Sleep with the musician. <laughs> so great. I lost that Pink Floyd shirt. I don't think I've got that shirt either. That's sad. That's, that's yeah, a good that's shirt. Bummer. Yeah, oh yeah, kick on. I think you're a little out of tune. No, maybe not. Yeah, I think so, a little bit. And you can hear Dean's guitar way better than mine because the recorder's right next to his amp. Yeah, it's like, it's right here, right in front of us. Now, is this two separate audio bits, like camera and, and audio? Yeah, I mixed, I used the audio from the recorder for this. Ah. I mixed it into the video. No, maybe it is the camera. I think it's just the camera. And this is back when we had like the double system going because we didn't like the camera's audio. I still much. do that. Yeah, it's, it's good to have that redundancy. But this is the camera audio. But yes, it's that same drum beat. <laughs> it just gave you the look for this, for the wrong note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? You're playing the wrong note. <laughs> this is the jazz version. It's interesting to see how the song evolves, too. from behind you every once in a while. <laughs> As you can tell, I was the front man. Yes, he's very much in the front, man. Yeah, it's not it's not like this at all, the way I play it now. This is more like the original recording that I didn't released. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's probably what we were uh, what, uh, basing it off of. Yeah. There's some good licks here, but the new version is nice and tight. Oh, there we go. That sounds good. I think this made it. This made it to the yeah, duration. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and this was in the original too. This is like. And this song used to have lyrics. Oh yeah, that's true. We can talk about that for a second. Yeah, when I originally wrote this song, back when, that's a good pause moment, we're both making some, mm. some basses. <laughs> I can still do that now. <laughs> when I uh, when I originally wrote the song, yeah, it did have lyrics, and in the music video for this, there's a piece of paper that the character in the video has, and they kind of zoom in on it at the end, and it's got... Oh yeah, that's right. It's got lyrics, it's got some of the lyrics, but yeah. It, yeah, it was originally a full-fledged song with vocals and everything, and after sectarian violence broke up, I got into this whole mindset of just wanting to do instrumental songs, and I was like, I'm just going to do like a Joe Satriani thing, with just, and I wasn't even going to do bass, I was just going to do two guitar tracks. Hmm. That was like my thing, that was like my whole plan when I first bought that Tascam digital recorder. Uh, is there any of the songs that we had that was like that? They got turned instrumental. Or that were like made instrumental in that time period? Because I'm trying to remember. Yeah, but none that I've released. Ah, oh, oh. Like, like Smile. Ah, yeah, Smile. I like Smile. And, yeah, which I'm going to release, so. Eventually. So you'll hear that eventually. And uh, there's like that. That kind of lullaby type one. Hmm. 
remember. Yeah, I don't know. That's but, like that's but not but a lot of going on. But it was, in a, I it was in a title. whole phase of like instrument where I was kind of like just sick of all. I, I don't know. I just it was like it just big change for me. I was kind of just grossed out with the whole way that things ended, and I just felt really unhappy doing music. And I was like, if I'm gonna do music, I'm gonna keep it really simple and just do guitars and stuff. Yeah, I remember you saying all the time, "Is like, yeah, it's like there's only two people I enjoy." playing music with and that's my dad and you so that's what you you always say that all the time it was like yeah big thing yeah it hit him pretty hard i remember yeah it sucks but i wouldn't be where i am now which i'm very happy where i am now yeah it's all part of the evolution yeah we're all doing our own things you know jack irons got his book cody's got his book dean he's working on some projects which we'll let him tell you about in his own time and i got the laguna munta thing so actually you know it all worked out pretty well yeah in a lot of ways. Yeah. But um, um, before we get too far off on the tangent, yeah, I had lyrics. It was a full-fledged song. And then when during that transition, I, I just zapped the lyrics. Which I like still. They're not bad. They're not bad lyrics. It's like, bad. Yeah. I don't know if you call it like one of your like, oh, I'm so proud of this, yeah. these lyrics ones. But it, I did. I was like, yeah, I liked it. it Usually I like the wordplay. Like I like listen to Hellfire today. I was like, oh, yeah, the wordplay is really cool. Yeah. I still really like the lyrics. I really... I really try. <laughs> I really try to write good lyrics because, like, my my riffs aren't that intricate, and I'm not a hell of a guitar player. Well, especially the older ones. I would, you know, I would say like the, a lot of the newer stuff doesn't really fall into that category anymore. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like just, oh, this is like this is like ten notes, and then one change in the middle. It's like yeah. it's not like that anymore. Yeah, I've definitely gotten better at uh, making my structure a little more. Um, Diverse. Yeah, totally. In my songs. But the riffs are... I'm not doing, like, Lamb of God type shit or anything. So I always try to make the lyrics really good. Because I they feel like that was my strong point. It was just really good, fun lyrics. And I... And I obviously, I continue to write... I continue to try to write good lyrics. And, uh, yeah, so that's actually not a bad song with the lyrics. Maybe we'll, uh... We'll dig those out someday. <laughs> he'll, uh... He'll speak it in the spoken word one yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do, like, a William Shatner type thing. <laughs> Running. Running. <laughs> <laughs> Never got me very far. Anyway, uh, let's finish up this video. I think we're about at the end. We're giving each other a look, so that's that means something. He's giving me the look, and I'm not. I haven't noticed yet. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, we have to register the look. <laughs> I had to reach over and turn off the Drum keyboard loop. real quick. Oh yeah, we got a yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and then I, I say we're just trying to get your attention with that one. So oh, it's very clear. I wasn't, happy, I wasn't happy with the performance. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can tell. I could just tell by the way I said that. That's that's code for Chris wasn't happy with that one. What the fuck, Dean? Oh, I don't think get was, on the ball. I don't think it was all you either. Cause like looking at the way I was playing, it was okay. <laughs> but that's the thing. Is like we were rough. It was we so rough. rough. It yeah. was so raw. Green. But people liked it. Raw. We, it was liked a lot. We got a lot of good compliments that night. I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, the manager, he, he, he was, at, maybe it was that night or afterwards, but he kept, he was asking me like what, what kind of music I was listening to, because he was like, man, you're, like, you're so seventies, man. He's like, because he's like your guitar. Oh, no, I didn't hear everything. this conversation. That's yeah, interesting. yeah. He just he was just kind of taken aback by the the vibe of uh -huh. the music. And, and just, yeah, I guess the whole field, the old Vs, like the old style Vs too, kind of the classic colors. Yeah, like when I was actually just thinking about this on the way here was like when we both had two Vs, kind of like the black and red together. It looked good. It, it did look good. good, yeah. And I switched to the Strat for a few songs. Because it was like, it had the whammy bar on that one, didn't, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah. It, it was like certain songs needed specific guitar. Yeah, and the clean. I don't know if you said that, actually. No, Strat does it all now. <laughs> now it's Strat. The Strat, Strat I'm telling you, man. That's sponsored a, by Fender. Just that's a, not sponsored. I would be. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a call. I'm open to this. <laughs> <laughs> Email me. Yeah. We'll work out a deal that's very one-sided. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very lucrative for me. <laughs> just send me a free guitar and I'll just... <laughs> that'll be fine. That's an easy buy. Yeah. Yeah, but they, yeah, they liked the, the 70s vibe. And I've... And I, you know, now I just say that when people ask me what kind of music. 70s vibe? Yeah, I'm just like 70s style rock and roll because like late 70s, early 80s, even to like later on, it's like what we grew up listening to. Yeah, that's true. 
So 80s a lot too. Oh yeah, just all the big 80s rock and metal bands. That was the that was the decade for it. Yeah. Those it, were that was what music that's what popular music was in the 80s. I mean I mean you got like your pop for sure, which is like that's and that's a little before us, but it's kind yeah. of what our parents were listening to. Yeah. That was the deal. And that's yeah, we grew up listening to that. <coughs> and yeah, heavily heavily influential, that's for sure. Mhm. Mm I agree. Yeah, and the same thing with my old man's music. He, I don't know, it's hard to describe it, but... <laughs> yeah, you both kind of skirt genres is kind of how I yeah. describe it. Well, that was, you know, that was something my, my dad really tried to instill in me, too, about not pigeonholing myself into a genre and getting stuck doing one thing, you know? And that's really something I've tried to stick to. Yeah, I didn't know that was something that he kind of pushed you for. He did, yeah. He did because he didn't... Yeah, he just didn't want me to get stuck in, in doing the same kind of boring, repetitive shit over and over again. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. That That is explained a lot, actually. Yeah. And, uh, you know me, man. I I, I, lis I listen to my dad often. Yeah, yeah. Probably not all the times that I should. But, <laughs> I, you know, I did take a lot of his advice to heart, and that was one of them. And that's why... Uh, well, yeah, you guys, you guys will hear it fairly soon... The Chuck album, it's a huge jump from oh yeah from Plugs Out. The difference, <laughs> it's nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, basically, um, basically, I'm creating a Laguna Munta genre, and that will entail whatever I want it to be. So when you ask what what genre, you just tell them Laguna Munta, mm. and then they'll know. Okay. I don't know. Then they'll <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, do we got any we got any other thoughts about this experience or any other little uh, tidbits? Yeah, playing there was awesome, and don't eat before you play. That's, uh, that's I never, two things. I've never had a problem. Man. I've had that issue with every time. What happened? Well, no, every every time that I like when I eat right before I go on stage, I feel like my lungs are like pressing against my stomach, mm. so it makes that I can't. I don't have the range. I don't have, like, the sustain anymore. Huh. I don't know. And I don't know if that's, like, nervousness. Maybe well, kind think, of broiling into my a, stomach. I, I don't really know what's going on. I think that's a thing that people, professionals say. Like, you're not supposed to eat before you perform. Yeah, and it, it has, like, had an issue with me. I'd never heard that before, but I noticed that every time that was like that, I was like, oh, shoot. Mm. And typically we did, because they come in there, like, we come in there, like, a couple hours early. They get ready to set up I like to, eat beforehand. I like to sit down and get the vibe of the room. <clears throat> Which is a good idea. Yeah, I like to... To kind of soak in the energy for a little while and it helps me kind of calm down and I hate feeling rushed so I like to get there early know I have time to set up and do my thing because I just I don't want to show up and just have to scramble to throw everything out of the truck hook it up tune up and then just play I just no if, it, if the time comes around then we're pretty much set up at that point yeah exactly and I guess you're probably still that way as well oh yeah I always show up early mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get it all ready yeah and I you know if there's you know because a lot of times they have tables in the corner where we would perform mm -hmm. Um, me and the co like the workers will just kind of stake it out and be like, how long have they been there? Are they going to leave soon? Okay. And then as soon as they leave, we go Oh, yeah, because it's always in we, that corner. Yeah, and we clear yeah, the table right. and we take the table outside so we, so nobody can sit there so we, yeah. can, so we can set up without any problems. So, yeah, and I, I mean, you guys have seen in the videos, I still play there frequently. It's my... Go-to venue, essentially. It's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's Laguna Muta's home, really. It's, it's where we played our first gig and they, they've consistently been really good to us. Have you played anywhere else? Yeah, um, at Old Martinez Hall. Um, That's right. Played I played that. at the Trinidad Music Festival. I didn't go to that one. I played at the other street festival in Trinidad. Okay. Played at the. That's right, Trinidad. Yeah. I played at the talent show in Trinidad. Um, mm -hmm. Played at the Taos Inn for That's Open right. I've Mic actually, I've night. I've actually seen a lot of these videos. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. I just couldn't think of one offhand. Played played at the Fahrenheit Gallery a few times. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, this is a lot more. Yeah. It's a lot more intricate than I thought it was. But yeah, there's actually... But that's where it started. Yeah, and it's it's just home. You know, it's, I think every band has that place that just treats them the best and they stay there in their early career and just keep going back there. Yeah, treats you the best. Was well, the first venue that we actually started on. It's got a lot of history. Yeah. Just, and, you know, my girlfriend worked there and got us the gig. And, I mean, I don't think the manager was sweet enough to keep giving us gigs if he didn't like the music just <laughs> because she works there. You know, he must have liked it. But she got it. Misty got us the end, so we have her to thank for that. And she, and you know, she's, she's, she actually has been the driving force a lot 
she pushed us to get that gig um, when I was kind of in a slump and I wasn't working on music. And she called you on it. She Yeah, she, she called me out and kind of pushed me and then I finished Plugs Out because of it. And, you know, I haven't really hit a slump since then, even though that was only last year. But I've been consistently working on Chuck basically since the last album. And, and it's very ambitious. It is. It's a lot of work. It's... Yeah, ambitious is a good word for it. Mm -hmm. But man, it's gonna be great. I hope you guys, I hope you guys like it, cause I'm really, I'm really putting a lot of time and effort and soul into it, and it's a story that I need to tell, and it's it's important to me in a lot of levels. It's very therapeutic. It's it has a lot of meaning to me, and it's and it's very important for me creatively because I'm just doing what I want to do and having fun. I I hated making plugs out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was a miserable experience. I was always stressed out. I didn't have fun doing. I mean, I had there were moments of fun. It wasn't like terrible the whole time. Right. Are you telling me that playing the same part of a song thirty times in a row and still not being happy with the performance is not a fun thing? Yeah, I get. It's weird. It's weird. It's, yeah, that's odd. I don't really. I don't get that. Most people would be into that, but yeah. it got old. I mean, yeah. I, I love the same 10 minutes of a song 50 times in a row. Oh, and I, you know, and I, I go crazy when I'm working, too. I'll just dig deep. I just dig deep. Like, if I can't get something right, I'll do it again. <laughs> and again. And again. Perfection. And, and then the next day, I'll delete it all. And I'll start again. <laughs> I'll be like, that one's pretty good. I could probably salvage. I'll, I'll do it. Salvage. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. that's a mentality. Yeah, I could salvage, like, like that half of the track. Simple. And then I'm like, I don't want to patch this together. That's bullshit. And I just delete it. <laughs> we'll start all over again. Oh, man. It's like Frankenstein finding all the best pieces and putting it together. Sometimes you I mean, sometimes you have to. I mean, sometimes there's no other option. Like, if you record it and you got this awesome sound that you can't achieve again for instance and you can't you know do it over again that's one thing but yeah so but this process of, of recording chuck has been fun it has been creative it's it's very fulfilling how do you feel it's different now do you like that did you did you tone it back and like make it so that you were less serious about like the actual perfectionist style i think there's a couple things one of them is that all these songs on Chuck are new. Okay, so and they're kind of fresh, that means. Yeah. It's always easier to record a new song than it is a song you know. Because they're less defined. Yes. Every time I've tried to record a song that I've been playing for a year or so you, it, You're like, I know how it this It has goes. to sound like it this. It has to be like that. Yep. That's and, the problem. And with the Chuck songs, they're all... It's all, well, let's see how this sounds, and I'll play a different piano, you know, sound. Interesting. So you would say, like, the best way to record would be to, basically, once you've written the song... Record it. You record it right then. Yep. Like, right away, before you really play it live or any of that stuff, you're trying to get it out. Some people might argue against that because... They want to work out the kinks probably. Exactly. that would be their Yeah, argument. but honestly, a lot of the time... not you know, I don't rewrite my songs. Mm -hmm. Typically, like, they're all written in one go. Hmm. You know, there are times when I'll go back and chop and change and rearrange lyrics. Yeah, the way that I remember it is usually, like, I've got this... I've got the... the ver I've got the, the music. And it's like, yeah, I'm working on the lyrics. I have, like, the first portion you know yeah the first verse is done and then a little bit more from yeah and out. usually it's all like I'll, I'll, I'll be there playing and i'll just write and write and then eventually i'm like okay well that's the song with very few changes mm -hmm. um so that's i kind of lost my chain of thought but yeah with the chuck cd oh yeah yeah that's like when you record them if they're fresh some people say it's a bit like it's a, it's a baby you know and and taking it out on the road or whatever, or touring it or playing it live is when it grows and then it becomes like a thing. But if you listen to a CD and like a live recording of songs, typically the band plays them pretty differently. Yes. It's actually a big pet peeve for me is usually if the live song is very different from the studio album. And my dad's the same way in this. It's like, oh, okay, this is like, I don't know, it's a notch down for sure. Like, yeah. this is, I love this song. Now it's, it's okay, they didn't do it right. It's yeah. kind of how I feel. <laughs> Maybe that's how you feel about it. And I, and I think another reason that I'm enjoying the Chuck process more is that, um, I think it, may, it might go back to the songs not existing, but there's no restrictions. It's, 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 this, it's this blowing the doors off of genre for me because I'm just not going to, I'm not going to strictly play rock and roll. I mean, I'll, that's my that's my home, and a lot of hmm. it's like rock and roll, and everything I do is pretty much attached to it. Yeah, in some you, way. you gravitate towards it. Yeah, but every once in a while you get thrown out of orbit. And with Chuck, it's just freedom. 
It's freedom. Of, it's it's freedom. Of, it, it is what Laguna Munta is supposed to be. Mm. It's freedom. That's what the Chuck album is. It's just this freedom, this freeform creative thing. It's going to be weird, and people might not get it, but I've, I've accepted that, and at the end of the day, you got to do it for you. And if you're happy with it and you want to do it and you're enjoying the process, that's why you do it. You can't do it for anybody else. And also, it, it answers a lot of lore for, like... The, the persona of the band. Not the band itself, but the persona of the band. There's a lot of story. Yeah, it's I'm really trying to as soon as I just as soon as I wrote the song Laguna Munta and decided that Laguna Munta is what it is, I I opened up the door to a mythos. And then you know, I don't remember how Chuck came into it. I think it was again Misty. I think Misty has to take credit for that because we were in Roswell visiting her family. We were at like the tourist shops. Oh, yeah, that's right. And she found the astronaut dude, and she was like, "Hey, this would be good for your stage show or whatever, just for fun." And I was like, "Yeah, cool." And then I yeah, I think it, I think it kind of plays off well off the emblem at the time. You totally. Know, it's like, oh, the moon, and it yeah. was always kind of space oriented. Exactly. Well, I, and that's why I designed the lettering to look very sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I think that was a really nice like bridge off of that. that yeah. Had. And so more credit to Misty there, and then. Of course, I told the story where I had the dream, and that's when Chuck's name came to me. I just yelled it in the dream. And so that's how Chuck came to be, and he's been a part of the stage show ever since. He uh, he handles the money. He's my uh, financial manager. Yeah, and, put and all your financial um, institutions in your stuff figure, slash blown up figure. Yes, he's full of hot air. <laughs> and so now... Uh, Having given, you know, I gave Chuck more thought. I gave more thought about who he is and why he is, and um, how to make him a full fledged character, and that's really what this CD's about. But it looks like we're about to run out of battery. So, do you have any uh, final thoughts on the whole Laguna Munta thing? I mean, it was really fun playing up there. It was really cool, like meeting the crowd and kind of just having the opportunity to play for everybody and express yourself in front of people like that. I, I like stage presence. I love that kind of stage show. And I do miss that sometimes, yeah. Yeah, it's some. There's something about... I mean, I, lived, I love to entertain no matter what. I like to make people laugh. I like to just entertain. So, we're gone. We're out of battery. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See ya.